Hello, fellow truth seekers. This is uh, part two of a, uh, a a little bit of a back and forth between Walter Block and me. And this is relating to the Israeli Hamas Gaza Strip West Bank uh, situation that's been going on for now, what, 80 years hot and heavy off and on. Um, I don't expect to come to an ultimate conclusion. However, recently, uh, October 7th, the Hamas folks struck back, or others could say they initiated an unprovoked attack. And uh, those are both kind of extreme positions. But there's been some back and forth. And so for the first time in my life, I've actually looked into it a tiny bit, not a lot. I haven't read a single book about it. I've watched a few videos from different perspectives, and I do not claim to completely understand all things Middle East. Um, I'm not an expert on stuff going on. I'm simply approaching this from a moral standpoint. I'm a, a lay philosopher. My interest is moral philosophy, and uh, this, is the, this is the place I'm approaching it from. I consider myself to be an anarcho-capitalist, and there's a subset of that that's called voluntarism. That's what I consider to be closest to my way of thinking, the conclusions that I have drawn. And so there was a, a famous libertarian named Hans Hermann Hoppe who wrote a rejoinder saying Walter Block is kind of a piece of junk because of his position on the Israeli Hamas situation. And then Walter Block and his partner wrote a, a rejoinder to that. And then Patrick Smith of Anarchast invited Walter and his partner on to talk about the, the situation. And I've listened to all of this, watched this, and I'm not in line with Walter Block as I usually am. And so I wrote an email to him essentially saying, hey, I think you're wrong. He wrote back and said, hey, how so? Please be specific. And so I wrote, I did a video, uh, which was my video that I released just before this one. And what I'm going to do today is read his response to that video. And then I'm going to, uh, once again, uh, either agree or push back a bit on some of the things. Um, I am so appreciative that that someone who's such a, uh, I don't know, such a respected longtime thinker like Walter is willing to kind of go back and forth with uh, eh, regular old little old me. So I, I think here that we'll get right into it. And this is, uh, from my perspective, not a battle of the personalities or of the um, the fallacy of what is it, the the appeal to authority. Uh, please don't think, oh, you know, I think Shepard's really cool looking. He's his vibrant red hair and muscular build is amazing. Or Walter Block's beard is amazing. Therefore, I'm going to go with that person. Or I've, I like the stuff they've done in the past. <clears throat> Don't uh, don't judge me by the color of my skin or Walter. Uh, judge us by the uh, content of our arguments. Are we critical thinkers who are are thinking clearly? So, with that long introduction, here goes. Dear Shepard, I just loved your analogy of a sectarian rapist. I appreciate your point that only an ANCAP position is fully correct. However, I think there is a disanalogy between rape and limited government. Rape is a, per se, vicious evil act and has no redeeming qualities whatsoever apart from benefit to the rapist, which all men of goodwill will regard as a negative, not a positive. Uh, amen to that last part. Rape is absolutely bad. No redeeming qualities. It's a nasty, bad thing. Um, and analogies, though, let's talk about uh, what analogies are. Analogies are kind of an example to bring to light uh, to uh, certain perspectives or characteristics that an original point might not make clear. So an analogy is a parable or an example. If it was ever 100% right on, it wouldn't be an analogy. It would just be a description of the original thing. If it's way, way, way beyond the pale, then it's called disanalogous. Uh, it is not an analogy at all worthwhile. So it's kind of a spectrum, and I guess you could grade them. That's an A-plus analogy, or that's a B analogy, or that's a C-level analogy, or that's just junk analogy. I think my analogy was pretty good, um, and my analogy was not for the state of Israel, for a government based on a religion or a 
a heritage or a, a ethnic group to exist. That's not the argument. The argument is the current rocketing, bombing, killing of 30,000 plus uh, Arabs in the Gaza Strip by the Israeli government. And there are a lot of collective terms here that it's hard to avoid, and I shouldn't use them. Forgive me when I slip. There's really no such thing as a we. There's no such thing as an Israel. There's no such thing as a Gaza Strip. Uh, there's no such thing as uh, Hamas. The, uh, these are just kind of ideals, ideas, abstractions. So it's 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 important that we don't fall into collectivism and just think of uh, a few people who represent a bunch of people who say they represent them. And then we call those other people by the name of the leaders. Who it, it, It's a confused mess. But long story short, I did not mean if I poorly communicated, then that's shame on me. I should have communicated more clearly. Hopefully I can clarify that here. My argument is not that the state of Israel, the existence of the state of Israel or the existence of Hamas is evil in and of itself. Um, yeah, yeah, it is to a little point, just like the Springfield, Missouri municipal government. Yeah, it's, it's a bad thing that that exists. I don't think governments are a good way to solve issues. I don't think states are necessary or inevitable or good. So I guess to some point we could call that evil, but it's not the existence of the state of Israel that I'm taking issue with. Uh, if there was just some state that existed and said, hey, we're kind of a religion and kind of a state and kind of an ethnic group, and we just want to be really cool, and here we are, that's fine with me. And if another group started up and say, hey, we're kind of a religion and kind of an ethnic group and kind of a state and kind of a government and kind of a movement, and we call ourselves Hamas, okay, that's cool, enjoy. When one group starts harming the other group without cause, uh, which I guess any harm to a group would be without cause, you can harm an individual who's attacking you. But you can't just say, well, the Western Hemisphere attacked the Eastern Hemisphere. Therefore, somebody from the Eastern Hemisphere ought to go kill somebody from the Western Hemisphere. That's collectivism. That's BS. We know better than that. Uh, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't cut it for a critical thinker who understands we and collectivism and individualism. So I, I think I might have poorly communicated to Walter that the argument that rape was similar to something was similar to the existence of the state of Israel. Nope, no problem with them existing or Hamas existing. My problem is what happened after October 7th. I've already admitted October 7th, uh, one group of people went, a collective went and hurt another group of people and shame on them for October 7th. I think 1,200 people were killed, many or most of whom were innocent civilians. And that isn't cool. And then since then, 30,000, or I think it's now up to 35,000, people have been killed who are on the other team, the Gaza uh, Arab Hamas team. And I know there are many, many little distinctions that I'm, not, I'm missing and I don't get it. And I don't understand it, but I don't think it is really pertinent to the conversation. What's important is that my analogy was a bad thing, killing a bunch of 30,000 people of whom 10 or 15,000 were innocents, that ain't cool. And rape ain't cool. And it's not a 100% analogy, or it wouldn't be an analogy. But it is very analogous. Going and killing an innocent person ain't right. And raping someone ain't right. And if you're, you can't really do it in a good way. You can't do a bad thing in a good way. And to argue for doing a bad thing... Even if saying that you're doing it under the, you know, you're you're putting on this mask and you're pretending to be Superman or a Democrat or a Republican or a baby gay well for Jesus or a uh, what was the one that Walter and Alan did the the oh, I can't think of it as a classical liberal. If you put on this silly mask and then they argue from a bad perspective, that's what I'm saying. Just doesn't make good sense. It's not a good idea to do that. Uh, from my perspective, I, I don't think I would want to be involved in that tomfoolery. Um, that's what that's what my analogy was about. Um, I was saying that supporting mass killing is bad. Rape is bad. 
and you can't support mass killing in a cool way and you can't support rape in a cool way. Um, I was not attacking the existence of various governments or states, though I wish no states or governments existed and maybe some other day I'll attack them as well. Um, now, I'm going to continue with what Walter wrote. Uh, in sharp contrast, limited government, minarchism, classical liberalism is not simply a pure, unmitigated e evil. It is far more complex than rape. Here are a bunch of people who hold such positions. Ayn Rand, Ron Paul, Frederick Hayek, Milton Friedman, Robert Nozick, David Hume, John Stuart Mill. You are now on record as accusing them of being no better than supporters of rape? I don't. Yes, the governments of Liechtenstein, probably pronounced that wrong, Monaco, Hong Kong, when it was on its own, Switzerland, etc., are all gangsters from an ANCAP point of view. Do you really want to say that there's nothing good about any of them at all? Okay, that paragraph, I, I take issue with a couple things. I don't think that I'm, I've rewatched my video, that portion of my previous video, and I don't think I was saying that, that it's the same thing. I'm accusing those people of being no better than supporters of rape. That doesn't, that doesn't add up. I was using an analogy and, uh, no, uh, that, that, that doesn't count. Um, that doesn't, that's, that didn't work. That doesn't add up. Um, and, and then I have nothing good to say about any of them at all. Um, Mon uh, Monaco, Hong Kong, uh, David Hume, Ron Paul, Ayn Rand. Yeah. All of those places and people, they're good ass by Hitler. There are good aspects. I believe he liked puppies. Like there are good aspects to many people. And there are certainly scales. I think a person who rapes one person is not as bad as a person who rapes five people. I think a person who rapes five people is not as bad as a person who rapes and beats five people. So there are scales. There are, there are continuums to everything. And I don't recall ever saying anything about not thinking that one wasn't better or worse than the other. I don't think it matters if, if one's slightly better or worse. I, I would call for all bad people to stop doing bad things. So maybe Pol Pot and Hitler and, and Stalin, um, maybe one of them is better or worse than the other. And, and a good historian could probably say, okay, well, here's the, here's the head count on how many each of them killed. Um, and so therefore Hitler isn't as bad because he only killed what Sometimes I hear 6 million, sometimes I hear 11 million people, gypsies, uh, homosexuals, Jews, etc. I, I, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but if I could say that Stalin had done worse or, or killed more people, then should I say that, well, I got to give Hitler a break? No, anybody who does bad stuff is bad. And arguendo, Israel is in way better position morally than Hamas. Great. Fine. It's it's right 90% of the time. Let's say 99% of the time, arguendo. But I'm not talking about that. I, I'm talking about that other little 1% where Israel goes and kills 15 innocent, innocent people. That ain't cool. Um, that's what I'm addressing. And so I believe, I don't know if it's a red herring or uh, I'm not sure what that's called or uh, uh, yeah, kind of putting words into my mouth that I don't think I said or meant. I, I'm trying to be charitable. And I don't feel like that paragraph was very charitable as to what I was really trying to get a, across. I, I don't know that I spoke as poorly as it appears that I did, but maybe I did. Back to uh, Walter's email. You are now taking the position that West Germany is not better than East Germany. Nowhere in my video. Uh, if somebody listened to my previous video, it's only 20 minutes. Will you give me a timestamp of where I took the position that West Germany is not better than East Germany? Back to the email. That South Korea is in no way to be preferred to North Korea? That Nazi Germany and Stalin's USSR, Mao's China, Pol Pot's Cambodia are on an equal moral footing with the gangsters of Liechtenstein, Monaco, Hong Kong, when it was on its own, Switzerland? Do you really want to defend such a position? No, I don't think I would take that position. I don't think I would take a, a position that 
one evil isn't better or worse than another. I, th I think if you throw down a whole pile of evils, I'm not always going to get it right, but I could, I could kind of pick them up and say, well, what would this one do? What that one do? Okay. I think this one's probably not quite as bad as that one, but they're all bad. Um, yeah. I don't, I, I don't recall ever having taken that position. Um, back to the email. If you are a sectarian par excellence in the view of this author, Rothbard Murray, 1967, War, Guilt in the Middle East, Left and Right, Spring, Autumn. Um, and there's a link to a book or an article. And then next book is this book of Allen's and mine, classical case for, uh, classical liberal case for Israel, uh, was written in response to Rothbard's very important essay. Uh, yes, the reader, leaders of both Israel and Ham Hamas are gangsters from your and my and cat perspective. Perspective, that is where you end. That is where Alan and I begin. We note that while both violate the NAP of NCAP, there are tremendous differences between them, something your philosophy will not allow anyone to say. I poorly explain my philosophy, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I'm, I think this is a different argument. I mean, I think this is a completely different thing. I'm, I'm trying to think in my video where I said anything to insinuate this. Um, yeah, I, I, I gave the correct link, though. I'm not sure what this is about. Um, I reject your philosophy, says Walter. I don't know how you could have painted yourself into such an awkward corner. I suspect this essay of Alan's and mine accounts for your position. And then a link to irrationality, anti-Israel. How is a rational person to deal with someone under the influence of Israeli derangement syndrome? One possibility. Don't waste your time with such a person. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking that my original argument, maybe I poorly made it. Um, that must be the case because I, yeah, the, the things here don't have anything to do. Like I'm not a pacifist. Um, I, I, I heard Walter say that, uh, Patrick Smith was, and I don't think Patrick is a, um, a pacifist. I, I think he's more than willing to to use force to defend himself against initiated force or violence. I know I would be. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where all of this came from. And it's, these are not arguments that I made. So again, to clarify, my argument is a bunch of people did a bunch of bad stuff in the whole world, but we're going to put all that aside for now. And now we're going to talk about one entity, which is Israel, since October 7th, from October 7th until now, uh, yesterday I celebrated Juneteenth, so uh, it's now June 20th, 2024, in the those seven, eight, nine, eight, whatever, I'm from Tennessee, I cannot be able to count that, in those months, the things that one particular entity has done to a collective or to a group of people, and I'm saying that it ain't right. Meanwhile, there were many rapes and murders and stabbings and and all kinds of things. People wearing spandex who should do not have the bodies to wear spandex. All kinds of really bad things have happened. But those are all not what I'm currently addressing. I'm currently addressing, it isn't cool for Israel to blow up a city block or a hospital or a, an apartment building or a house with a bunch of innocent people in it because there's someone who they suspect or know. Let's even argue and say they know there's a bad guy in there who wants to hurt his enemy um, and they want to kill that person and that person is using innocent people as human shields. I'm saying it ain't cool to blow up a city block to kill a bad guy. That's in essence my argument. So yeah, I don't want to keep repeating myself. So yeah, that's, that's, that's where I come from. Um, I don't know what else to say. I think that's it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you find my thinking to be an error, please point it out. And timestamps sure help. If you could just say, you know, somewhere between minute three and four of your last video, that's where you went astray, Shepard. Okay, I'll go rewatch that and see what I did. I'll examine myself and think, hey, did I have some stinking thinking going on? 
and I'll try to think about it more critically. So thank you for helping me think more clearly. If I'm wrong on this, boy, oh boy, do I need to know. Um, I would very much appreciate somebody letting me know how I'm wrong on it.